Hi! Welcome to this jewelry making tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to create a necklace and a pendant using metal beads, a, pyra a pyrite bead, different other beads. I will use these small golden beads, a, a bead cap, and to make the necklace I will also need some findings and some tools. If you're ready, let's begin. First of all, we shall talk about what we need in order to create this necklace with pendant. So as I've just told you, we shall need some findings in order to connect our beads and also some tools. So, uh, we shall need some findings to create the pendant and other findings to create the necklace. For the necklace, I will use some um, black nylon cord. I have chosen this thin nylon cord. And um, I will need some fold over cord ends for the uh, necklace, some jump rings, and lobster claw clasp in order to close and open the necklace. For the pendant, I will need this uh, head pin and I will also use this snap-on bail. As tools I will need pliers. These are the chain nose pliers and you can recognize them because they are pointed here and because their surface is lacking any teeth so as you can see the surface is very smooth without teeth so that it does not does not scratch our findings um, I will also need a jump ring opener for the jump rings and to make the pendant we shall need these two uh, pliers the cutting pliers and the round nose pliers. The cutting pliers, the, uh, as the name implies, are used for cutting metal and uh, the wire of our pin. And the round nose pliers, because they are rounded here, uh, they are used to create the loops. So we shall create the loop of our pen. For the nylon uh, string, I shall also use, if necessary, I shall use a pair of scissors and a lighter. In order to measure the length of our yarn, we can use a measuring tape. And now let's begin making our necklace with pendant. Let's begin with the pendant. So, I will take, first of all, our head pin. As you can see, the head pin has this part here, which looks like the end of a nail, and it stops the beads from sliding out of our pin. So, I shall put the first bead on the head pin, and as you can see, it stops at the point where you have the end of the head pin, like this. And now I will add a bead cap, like this. I will uh, add the pyrite bead, so this is a natural bead, the gemstone. Then I will add the metal bead, like this. And I will add another small bead to mark the end of the pendant. And now 
I have this part here. Let's see from a closer distance. This is where we have to make a loop. In order to make a loop, the first step will be to bend this uh, wire of the head pin. So, whenever you bend this wire, you must not bend it precisely above the last bead because you risk to break this bead, especially if it is a small bead, if it is made of a gemstone or of um, pl plastic or glass, they, uh, these beads can break easily if you do not let some space between the bead and the place where you bend. So I will let about uh, one millimeter of space until the point where I bend the pin and I will grab, as you can see, I'll, I have le uh, left uh, one millimeter of space here and I will bend the pin like this with the pliers like this. So I bend the pin to 90 degrees like this and now I will measure so that our pin is not too long when I create the loop. I will grab the tip of the pin and cut a little bit of this tip with the cutting pliers. Like this. And now let's make the loop. In order to make the loop, I will take the round nose pliers, grab the tip of the pin and start rolling around the um, rounded tip of my round nose plier. So as you can see, I will roll this way until I have created this loop, like this. And now, my pendant has a loop here. This way. I will take the bail and open it like this. As you can see, I have opened the bail. I will put the the pendant on the bail and I will close it like this. the pendant is ready. And now let's create the necklace. So I have these ends, these two ends of my string of the cord and I will create a small knot here exactly at the end of the cord this way and I will take the fold over cord end and fold it over the knot and the cord. Like this. So as you can see I am pressing on the 
fold over chord end and especially on the lower part under the knot so that it does not allow the knot to slide out like this So the most important thing is to press on the lower part here so that the knot which is larger does not come out through this area. This way. So we have attached the fold over cord end. And now I shall take one of those jump rings and open it with the pliers and the jump ring opener this way. I will put it through my cord end here. And I will also take the lobster claw clasp and put it on the jump ring. Now I can close the jump ring. this way and this end of my cord of the necklace is ready now we shall do the same steps on the other end of the necklace cord so I'll begin with the knot I'll put the knot again into the fold over cord end like this I will close the fold over cord end like this And again I will press on the lower part of the fold over cord end to prevent the knot from slipping out like this and again I will take the jump ring and open it I will put the jump ring on the fold over cord end and close it this way and now let's see if we can open and close the necklace so the necklace is ready and let's also add the pendant to the necklace I will close the necklace again and the pendant the necklace with the pendant is ready So this is our finished necklace with pendant. So this is the finished necklace and pendant and uh, so I hope that you liked this video. Thank you for watching. I will show you how to make a necklace using this metal pendant. I chose 
a pendant in the shape of a coin, of a Greek coin, antique coin. And uh, for the necklace I will also use some black nylon cord. As you can see this will be a short necklace around the neck. Um, to make this necklace I will only need a few findings and some tools. Um, I will use a bale for the pendant and for the necklace I will use a lobster claw clasp, some jump rings and these spring cord ends. And as tools, I will use a pair of pliers, these chain nose pliers, a jump ring opener. In case that I want to open the jump rings, I can also use a second um, pair of pliers. And if I want to cut uh, from the cord, I uh, will use the scissors and a lighter. And now let's begin by measuring the length of the cord. So as I said, this will be a short cord that will just go around the neck. And I chose a piece of cord that is about 34 and a half centimeters long. That would be about 13 and a half inches long. If you want to make a necklace for men, you can add about one or one and a half uh, inches. That would be about 36-38 centimeters. Um, and now let's start making the necklace. So, I will take the pendant and the bale, and as you can see, the bale has these little teeth here. And I will put the teeth into the orifice of my pendant. Like this. And I will press on the bale this way, so that the teeth remain inside of this hole. this way. And the pendant will look this way. Now, let's see the necklace. For the necklace, I will take the I will take the nylon cord and one of those spring ends, cord ends. I will burn the cord ends so that it fits into the spring cord end and I will put the nylon cord into this cord end this way i have only pressed it in into the middle of the cord end but if i would pull on the cord end it would come out so to prevent the cord from coming out of the cord end i will take the pliers and press on the end of my spring cord end here. This way. So as you can see this end here of the spring cord end is pressing into my nylon cord. Now 
uh, the other end of my spring cord end has this little ring here and I am going to lift the ring this way so that I can attach the jump ring on this ring here. I will put the pendant on the cord like this and now I will also attach the second cord end to my cord. this way. Now, again, I will press on the end of the cord, spring cord end here. This way. And I will grab with the pliers I will grab the ring and lift this way so that the ring becomes visible like this. And now I will take a jump ring and put it on this ring. I will open the jump ring with the jump ring opener and with the pliers. I'll put the jump ring here on this ring. And I will also put the lobster claw clasp. This way. And now I have attached the lobster claw clasp to the necklace so that it can be uh, opened and closed. And the last step will be to attach the last ring, jump ring, the second jump ring, And close. This way. And now let's see what the closing system of the necklace looks like. So I will attach the ring to the claw cla lobster claw clasp and the necklace is now closed. Now our necklace is ready and let's see what the finished necklace looks like. So this is the finished necklace. I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to attach a piece of leather cord to a bone pendant in order to create a necklace. First of all I will find the center of my leather cord like this and I will attach the leather cord. First of all I will make a loop like this and attach it to my uh, pendant and now I will lift one of the
a part of the leather cord and then I will cross the other one and also lift it like this. So as you can see the cords are crossed over here and they go up towards the upper part of my pendant. And now I will create a knot over here so that the pendant doesn't fall uh, out. I will make a loop like this. This way. So I have a loop and I will take the leather cord and put it through the loop and pull it out like this through this loop in order to create this loop right above my pendant. So this knot over here is going to hold my pendant in place. And now let's create some sliding knots on our cord so that we can open and close the necklace so that it can be hung around the neck. So I will stretch this cord and I will take the other cord and put it over the first cord uh, I will make a loop like this in the length of about four fingers and I will place it above the other cord and I will start turning the end of my cord like this so I have this loop that I have created and I will take this end of my cord and start turning it around my first, the longer cord by key and keep this end of the loop like this. So I will need this little loop here, I will grab it with my fingers and I will start turning the leather cord around the other cord like this this way and now I only have this end of my leather cord here and I will put it through my loop here and now I will pull on the cord here and as you can see the loop is becoming smaller like this until it grabs the end of my leather cord like this and I have created the first sliding knot. Now I will put, I will turn uh, the necklace around so that we can make the second sliding knot as well. I will again bend my cord like this and I will start turning the end of my cord around the two cords like this.
And now, after I have turned, let's see from a closer distance. Let's repeat. So I create, I have, so this is my necklace and this is the end of my cord that comes from the other side. So I bend the cord like this. I will keep this loop here on the first cord like this. I will grab the loop with my fingers and with the other cord I will create two loops. So one loop and the second loop and I have the end of the cord here. Now I will put the end of the cord through my loop like this. So as you can see I put the end of the cord through this loop and I will now pull on the on my cord so that the knot will close like this. So when I pull on this cord the loop is closing and it is pressing on the end of the cord stopping it from opening. This way. And as you can see, let's see from a distance. So this is our finished necklace with the leather cord and with the sliding knots and the bone pendant. So I hope you like this video and uh, I hope that you know how to create sliding knots and how to attach a bone pendant which has no um, orifice here for hanging. So thank you for watching. I will show you how to make a necklace using magnesite beads and these black wooden beads. Now, in order to make the necklace, we should need some string, some uh, thread. I have chosen some black nylon thread and also some findings. In order to close the bracelet I will need this clasp, S-shaped clasp. Uh, I will need some jump rings, two jump rings. I will also need some bead ends like these and some crimps. Um, regarding the length of the thread, as you can see here these magnesite beads, which are pointed, have two orifices. Therefore, I will use a double string like this, a double yarn. The length of a necklace, which is situated around the neck, so a shorter necklace, for women, is about 40 centimeters long for women and you can add a few centimeters for the um, necklaces for men for example you can make it 46 or 47 centimeters for men and that would be about 15 and a half inches for women and perhaps 17 or 18 inches for a necklace for men so this is why I will cut uh, the double of that length for my necklace. So it will be 
80 centimeters long this uh, cord this uh, thread and that would be about uh, 32 inches long 30 to 32 inches long of course to that you have to add a bit of uh, thread so that you can make the knots so it will be like 34 inches long and um, 80 let's say 85 86 centimeters long together with the length of the thread that I will um, use for creating the knots and uh, of course beside the beads and the findings we shall also need some tools for my jump rings and for bending metal I will use these chain nose pliers also for the jump rings I have this jump ring opener or I will use a second pair of pliers for the thread I will use a pair of scissors and a lighter and for the crimps I can use either the chain nose pliers or the crimping pliers the last item the last tool that we need in order to make uh, the necklace will be a needle the big eye beading needle which I will use in order to put the beads on the thread so let's begin creating this necklace so the first step will be to put the thread on this needle I will take one of those crimps So this is the crimp that I will use and I will put it on our needle this way and I will try to find the middle of our thread. So this should be the middle point of our thread. Now I will make a knot here so that it does not move. And we have established which the precise middle point is for our bracelet, for our necklace, sorry. So this will be one end of our necklace. Now I will take both threads, put them into the needle and I will take one of those bead caps and also put it on our needle like this and as you can see now let's see from a closer distance as you can see now the crimp is inside the bead cap and it will not come out through the orifice of the bead cap now we can close the bead cap using the pliers and the crimp that is inside will no longer be visible like this so I have closed this bead end and now we can add our clasp I will take one of those jump rings and open the jump ring using the 
chain nose pliers and the jump ring opener like this I hope I opened the jump ring enough so that it goes through the clasp like this so I put the jump ring on the clasp and I will also put the jump ring through our bead end like this and now let's close the jump ring like this and I have added the clasp to the end of our necklace So now let's start creating the necklace. Whenever we make a necklace and we have different types of beads, we have to think about the fact that we have to calculate the number of beads that we have so that we have a symmetry of the necklace that we create so I will put I will begin by putting 24 beads of uh, 24 black beads after which I will start adding the white beads the stone beads So let's start putting the black beads. So these are 10 and I'll add another 14 beads. So here we have 24 beads. Now let's make a small measurement so that we can understand exactly what dimensions the uh, necklace will have. So as you can see here, this bead is about 5 millimeters. about a quarter of an inch one bead whereas the stone bead is half a, a bit larger than half an inch and it is about one centimeter and a half almost two centimeters 
one centimeter and a half long. Now we shall add the first white stone bead. I shall remove one of the threads and I will keep only one of those two threads. So I'll put one of the threads through the white bead, remove it, and then I take the second thread and put it through the bead, through the other orifice of the bead, like this. And we have added the first stone bead, like this. Now, again, I will take the needle and the two threads and add a few more beads. So I will put three black beads. like this. I'll remove the needle and again I will work with the two separate threads. I will take one of those stone beads and put the two threads through the two orifices of the stone bead. Now again I will add three black beads and I will put the central bead like this. So this will be our central bead and again three black beads another white bead
again I'll add three black beads the last black bead, a uh, white bead, sorry. One and the second thread. way now I have created the central part of our necklace and I will add another 24 beads on this black beads on this side Then another 10 and another 4 and I can remove the needle now let's close the necklace now we have to put the bead end on our thread I will open the bead end so that I can work inside this bead end because we shall have to make a knot. So I will take the bead end and put it on the needle. Like this. And now I will take a crimp and also put it on this needle. So I will take this crimp and put it on the needle. This way. So as you can see I have the bead end and the crimp here on this needle. And now that we have the bead cap 
the bead end on our threads I will take a crimp and I will put the one of the threads on the needle and I will take the crimp and put the crimp on the needle as well like this and on one of the threads I will remove the needle and as you can see the we have put on the threads the bead end and on one of those two threads the crimp now whenever we make the necklace we must make sure that the beads are neither too compressed too close to each other um, nor that they are too far away from each other because if they are too far away we shall see the thread but if they are too compressed they will look rigid so we have to give a little space to this uh, thread so the beads must not not be too tight together and now I will take the two threads let's see from a closer distance and I will make a knot with those two threads So I made one knot, let's make another one or two knots so that the thread does not open. And this way the crimp will remain inside our bead end here and will prevent the thread from sliding. Now I've made a few knots on the thread and I can cut the thread like this. I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread. This way the end of the thread will stick to the knot and will prevent the knot from opening and now I can close the bead end. I will take the pliers and close the bead end this way I will take the jump ring and I will open it and attach it to this bead end. 
So I'll put it through the orifice of this bead end like this and close it. This way. And now let's see if the necklace clasp opens and closes. So this is our uh, S-shaped clasp. And let's see what our necklace, finished necklace, looks like. So this is what the finished necklace looks like. I hope you liked this video and um, I hope that you now know how to create a necklace of this type and how to attach this type of clasp. Thank you for watching. Hi. Welcome to this video. In this video I will show you how to create a surf necklace using uh, turquoise, coral beads and beads in the color of bone. Um, of course, to create the necklace I will need first of all some findings and uh, I will use a lobster claw clasp to open and close the necklace. I will also need some jump rings and some bead ends. Um, I will also need some crimps um, and in order to assemble them I will also need tools. Um, I will need um, thread. I have chosen some nylon, black nylon thread, in order to put the beads on this thread. And as tools, I will need pliers, a big eye beading needle, this needle, for the thread. I will use a pair of scissors and a lighter. To measure the thread I will use um, measuring tape and to open and to close the um, jump rings I will need a pair of pliers and a jump ring. And now let's begin by measuring the length of our thread. First of all, uh, for a necklace, a surf necklace that is around the neck for women, um, you, ne uh, you need about 34 to 35 centimeters, so this would be the length of the necklace itself. Uh, that would be about 14 inches, 13 and a half to 14 inches for women. For men you can add one or one and a half inches for the necklaces for men so they could vary between uh, 14 and a half to 16 inches. That would be about 37 to 41 centimeters if you want to make a necklace for men. Um, and to this length uh, you should also add a few inches to the thread so that you can um, put the thread on the needle and that you can make the knots. So you should add some extra thread so that you could um, create the ends of your necklace. Um, I recommend that you measure exactly uh, the circumference of the neck uh, if you know the person for whom you want to make the necklace or if you want the, to make the necklace for yourself. And now 
uh, after I have explained to you what uh, findings, what tools we need, what beads we need for this necklace, let's start making the surf necklace. I will put the thread uh, on the needle. And now let's start making the um, preparing the thread. I will make a, a knot and at the end of my thread here. I will try to make a larger knot. Let's make one more knot so that the knot at the end of our thread is large enough so that the beads don't fall off. like this and now I will take the lighter burn the end of the thread like this and I will take one of the crimps and put it on the needle so this is the crimp and I'll put the crimp on the needle like this and the crimp will stop next to our knot now I'll cut the threads here. Now what we shall do next is that I will take the pliers and I will press on our crimp to make the crimp flat like this so the crimp will not slip over our knot so as you can see now our crimp is no longer round it is flat and it presses on the thread and it stops in the knot like this and now let's take one of those the bead end so. and I will put the bead end on my needle this way and it will stop in our crimp here So now, as you can see, this bead end is going to cover the knot and the crimp.
Let's take the pliers again and I will press on the pliers to close this bead end like this. And as you can see, our bead end covers the knot and covers the crimp so that they are no longer visible. Uh, this is why when you make a knot, you can make the knot as large uh, as you uh, like so that it doesn't come out, the thread doesn't come out, because uh, even if the knot doesn't look aesthetic, it will be covered by this bead end and it will be invisible. And now I will take the lobster claw clasp and put it on our bead end here. And I will take the pliers and close this bead end like this. This way. So now as you can see the end of our necklace is ready. And now we can start putting the beads. So I will take the first bead and put it on the needle like this. And now I will take some white beads in the bone color Uh, now let's start adding the turquoise beads. So I'll put a turquoise bead. Another turquoise bead. A coral bead. And then another two turquoise beads. this way like this and now let's continue adding um, white beads in the color of bone so uh, what's important is to always um, count the number of beads so that the beads that we add should be uh, in the same length and they should look symmetrical. So I will add another 10 white beads in the color of bone and then I will add again 
uh, turquoise and coral beads using the same pattern. And I will continue until I reach the end of my necklace. So let's continue adding the white bone color beads and then the turquoise and coral. So this is the sequence and we shall continue using the same sequence of beads. And now uh, we have reached the end of the necklace and we shall close the necklace. First of all I will take the bead end and open it. So I will open the bead end as much as possible so that I can work inside of the bead end because I will need to make some knots here inside of the bead end. So I opened it and I will put the bead end on my needle like this. Now I will take another crimp So I will take this crimp and put it also on the needle, like this. So as you can see I have the bead end and the crimp here. Now uh, when I... Um, Let's remove the needle. When I um, close the necklace, I must make sure that the beads are not too compressed like this, so that they are not pressing too much on each other, they are not too close to each other like this, because they will look rigid. So if they are, the beads are too compressed, they will look rigid like this and not uniform. They shouldn't be too loose either because you can see the thread if the beads are too loose. So usually I will leave about one millimeter here and then I will take the pliers, let's see from a closer distance. Like this. So as you can see this is the crimp and at, the dist uh, at a distance of about one millimeter from the end of my um, beads, where the beads stop, like this, I will grab the crimp with the pliers and I will press on the crimp. Like this. And our crimp will press on the thread. So as you can see the crimp is flat now and it presses on the thread. So above the crimp I will make some knots to prevent the crimp from sliding on the thread and the necklace from opening. So right above the crimp that I have pressed, I will make these small knots. And my knots will be here at this point so that the crimp cannot slide upward on our thread. So it will stop in my knot. Let's make another knot. As I said, uh, here I can make as many knots as I like because they will be covered by the bead end 
and they will not be visible. Like this. And now, with the scissors, I will cut the thread like this. So I cut the thread. I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread like this. And now, I can take the pliers and close close the bead end. Like this. I've closed the bead end. And now here I have the this hook of the bead end, I will put the jump ring, take the pliers and close this hook here, like this. And as you can see, I have closed the end of the necklace like this. And let's see if the lobster claw clasp opens and closes my necklace. So this is the closure of my necklace. And now let's see what the finished necklace with coral, turquoise and bone beads looks like. So this is the finished necklace, surf necklace, and um, as you can see we only need a few findings, some thread and the beads in order to make uh, this uh, simple necklace. I hope you uh, like the necklace and uh, thank you for watching. Hi. In this video I will show you how to create a necklace using beads and some metal charms. Now, uh, in order to create the necklace, we shall need some findings and some tools. Um, as findings, I will use these crimps. I will use this uh, S-shaped clasp. Some jump rings. And some uh, bead ends. I will also need some thread and to assemble the beads and the findings I will use tools. Uh, first of all, I will need a pair of chain nose pliers. I will need a big eye beading needle, 
a jump ring opener. I will also have uh, this uh, pair of pliers on the table in case I need two pliers to open and to close the jump ring. I will use a measuring tape to see how long the necklace should be. And for the thread, for the nylon thread, I will need a pair of scissors to cut the thread and a lighter to burn the end of the thread. Let's take the big eye beading needle and let's begin making the necklace. The first step is to measure the length of the necklace. The length of the necklace around the neck is going to be uh, of about 36 centimeters, that is about 14 inches. If you want to make a necklace for a man, you can add one or uh, two inches to the length of the necklace, that would be 15, 15 and a half or 16 inches, or 39 to 41 uh, inch, uh, centimeters for the necklace alone. Uh, when you uh, cut the thread, you can add a few more inches, uh, three or four inches to the thread at least, so that you can make the knot, the knots at both ends. Um, that would be a maximum of 50 centimeters. Because you will have to put the thread on the needle and if you do not have an extra one, two or three inches of thread uh, you will not be able to use the needle because the thread will be too short. And now let's begin by creating a knot at the end of the thread. Uh, now that I have created the knot, I will take the lighter and burn the end of this knot like this. I will put the thread on the needle like this. You have to take into consideration that sometimes this point here of the thread may be cut by the needle because the inside of the needle is sometimes a little sharp. So you have to be attentive that this bit of thread should be cut away. So you should put enough thread so that you can cut this last bit of thread because you, uh, it is a possibility that the um, needle may cut the thread. And now I shall take one of those crimps so this crimp and I will put the crimp on the needle like this this way and as you can see the needle, the crimp has stopped uh, in the knot. Now I will take the pliers and press on the crimp this way to make the crimp flat so that it no longer moves on our thread. Now I will take 
the bead cap and I will put the bead cap on my needle this way and now I will close the bead cap using the pliers so that the knot and the crimp remain inside the cap now I will take one of those jump rings open the jump ring I will put the jump ring on the S clasp and I will close it And now I will put the jump ring and the S uh, and the um, S clasp on the bead cap and I will take the pliers so I took a, a pair of pliers that is more pointed these are the round nose pliers they are usually uh, used for creating loops but because the pliers have a smaller tip here I will use them this time in order to close the necklace like this and as you can see now I have attached the clasp Now the end of my necklace is ready and we can begin adding the beads. So I shall uh, start adding the beads in a specific order so that they uh, form a pattern of black and white beads.
Now at this point I will start adding the metal charms. I will add the first metal charm, the smaller one. Then I will add some beads. I will add the second metal charm. Again, some beads. And now I will add this metal charm with, which will mark the middle of my necklace. The center of my necklace. This way. And now that we have reached the middle of the necklace, let's uh, create the rest of the necklace so that it is symmetrical to the first part. So again, I will put black and white beads. Then the last, the second, the small metal charm. And from this point on I will only add um, beads. No more metal charms. This way. 
And now, as you can see, I added all the beads and we have to add the bead end. I will open this bead end like this so that I can work inside the bead end. I will put the bead end on my needle like this. Now I will take another crimp So I will take this crimp and put the crimp on the needle this way. I will remove the needle from the thread. I will take the pliers and press on the crimp. Um, whenever you make a necklace or a bracelet, you have to take into consideration that the beads should not be too far away from each other so that the thread is visible, but they should also not be too compressed, too uh, tight next to each other, because as you can see, if they press too much on one another, the necklace will look rigid. So they have to be a little loose, but not too loose, so that the thread becomes visible. You can leave about one millimeter, millimeter space here, so that the beads have a bit of space to move, that they are not, not too compressed, but they should also not be too loose. like this. So I have pressed on the crimp here and the crimp will block the thread from moving up and down. This way. And now I will start making some knots above the crimp to make sure that the crimp does not slip from the thread. So this is the reason why I had to open the bead uh, end so much, so that I could have enough space to make the knot right above the crimp. So I'll make a few knots just like at the beginning now as you can see on the thread inside of the bead cap we have the flattened crimp and right above the crimp I made a few knots so this way the thread will not slip out of the bead end and the um, necklace will be, the beads of the necklace will not fall off. Now, let's cut the thread above the knot. Like this. I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread like this and I will close the bead cap so that the knot is no longer visible and the crimp so I will use the pliers and as you can see I have closed the bead And now I will take the last finding, the jump ring, put it on the hook of the 
bead cap and I will also take the round nose pliers to close the bead end. Because the round nose pliers have a smaller tip here. So I can grab the small items uh, easier. This way. And now I have closed the necklace. I will put all the tools away. Let's see what the closure of the necklace looks like. So this is the necklace closure. And let's see what the finished necklace looks like. So this is the finished necklace with the uh, S clasp and with the metal uh, ch uh, charm ornaments. So I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching. Hi, in this video I will show you how to create a necklace using a bone pendant and beads. I will use black and white beads. For example, this is lava stone. And um, I'll also use some black and white wooden beads. And also uh, beads in other shapes. As I said, this um, necklace will be black and white, and therefore it can be combined with any um, colors on the clothing. In order to make the necklace, I will use a double thread like this. And um, the length of the necklace itself will be about 36 and a half centimeters to 37 centimeters. That would be about 14, 14 and a half inches. In order to be able to create the knots and put the beads on a needle, uh, I will add a few more inches, one or two. Or maximum three inches of thread uh, to my two threads uh, and this way um, I will have enough thread to create knots and to um, hold the necklace when I uh, add the beads. So now let's talk about the findings that we shall use and the tools. First of all, let's talk about the tools. So I have here some of the tools that I will be using. Uh, for the thread I will use a pair of scissors and a lighter. Um, and for the metal findings um, I will use a pair of chain nose pliers, a jump ring opener. Um, I can also use, if necessary, uh, another pair of pliers to open and to close the jump rings. 
and um, I can use for the crimps I can use the crimping pliers or the chain hose pliers um, in order to combine all those beads and attach the pendant I will need some findings too and let's talk about the findings now let's begin with the closure of the uh, necklace to close the necklace and to open and close the necklace I will use this S clasp and some jump rings for the end of the necklace I will use these uh, bead ends and some crimps and now let's begin making the necklace um, unlike in the case of other necklaces um, with this necklace I will use two th uh, threads um, because I have these pointed beads these canine shaped beads which have two orifices so I will use two threads for my entire necklace. I will take the two threads and I will put them through my pendant, my bone pendant. I will use the big eye beading needle. So this is the needle that we need. I will put the two threads through the needle. So I just open the needle like this, put the two threads through the needle. and I will put the needle through this orifice of the of the uh, pendant and now I will find the middle of my pendant First of all, let's put the four yarns through the needle. I will take one of those crimps so let's take one of the crimps and I will put with the needle I will put the crimp on my needle like this this way and I have brought the crimp over here and now I will find the middle of my two thre uh, of my two threads this way and I will press on the crimp now I will take the yarns and make an overhand knot above the crimp
I will pull on each of the threads like this. And now that I have made a knot above the crimp, I will take the threads, put them on the needle, and I will take one of those beads, put it also on the needle, and I'll put it on the threads, and I bring it down here, and this way the bead covers the crimp and the knot. Now I can remove the needle. And now I will separate the thread in two threads and I will start adding the beads on each of the two threads. So I put the thread on my needle and I will start adding beads. So I added the first two beads, now I will put one of those white beads a lava stone bead, a teardrop shaped lava stone bead another white bead two black beads and now I will put the first um, tooth shaped uh, bead with two orifices I will put one thread through one of the holes and the second thread through the other. Like this. And now I will continue adding the wooden beads. Again, I put the thread on my needle and I will continue adding those beads. I'll put some white beads too, a white, a black and a white bead. Like this. Again some black beads.
some more black and white beads. the rest of the black beads. Like this. So now we have finished one half of the necklace. The next step will be to add the bead end. So I will again put the threads on the needle and put the bead end on the needle too, like this. In order to uh, block the thread and to stop the beads from sliding out from the thread, I will use one of those crimps and I will put the crimp but on a single thread, not on both threads. So I will put the thread through the needle and I will put the crimp on only one of the two threads. Like this. So as you can see here, I have the bead end and the crimp is here. Now, I will make sure that the beads are not too close to each other but also not too far to each other because if they are too far from each other the thread will be visible if they are too compressed like this they will look rigid so we want them to be neither too close nor too far from each other so uh, we can just lift the beads hang the beads like this so that they order themselves one over the other and now I will take the two threads and make a few knots making sure that in between the two knots we will have our crimp so I'll make one knot another knot a third knot perhaps a fourth knot and these knots as you can see here they hold the crimp in place and this way our beads will not fall off the thread Now, I will 
will take the scissors, cut the thread, and I will burn the end of the thread. Like this. So as you can see, I burned the end of the thread that I cut. And now I can take the pliers and close the bead. The bead end. Like this. And now I will take one of those jump rings. I will take the pliers, the chain nose pliers and the jump ring opener and I will open this jump ring. I will put the jump ring on the S clasp and I will put it on the bead end. And now I will close the jump ring like this. And I have attached the S clasp. And as you can see, half of our necklace is ready. All we have to do is create the second half of the necklace, which must look symmetrical to the first. So I will take the other two threads, put the threads on the needle, Add the next beads in a symmetrical way. Now I have reached the pointed bead and again I will separate the two I will separate the two threads and I will put one thread through each of the holes of the bead. And now let's continue with both threads being put on 
the needle because all the other beads are wooden beads. And now the beads have been added to the thread. Now I will put the bead uh, end. Now I will put the bead on the thread. I will remove one thread. Then I will take the crimp, put the crimp on only one of the two threads. This way. Now I can remove the needle. And again, let's see from a closer distance. Again, we have the B, the crimp on one of the threads, the bead end here, and the two threads. Now I will make, I will use the two threads to make a knot. Before that, I will lift the uh, thread so that the beads arrange themselves alone on the thread so that they are not too tight to each other, too compressed, nor too loose, so that they uh, are not too rigid, nor that we can see the thread. And now I will make a few knots 
here. And those knots will be masked by our bead end. Now that I have made a few knots, I will cut the thread. Like this. I will put the two threads away. I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread. Like this. I will take the pliers, close the bead end. this way and I will put the second jump ring on the bead end. So I will open it again with the pliers and the jump ring opener and put it on the bead end here. This way. like this. And now I will close the necklace and let's see what the finish, finished necklace looks like. So this is the finished necklace. We have the wooden beads, the S clasp as a closure, the lava stone beads in the shape of a teardrop and the bone pendant. So I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to create a necklace using metal charms and pendants. I will use this metal pendant, these metal charms in the shape of feathers and black and white beads. So these are six millimeters, six millimeter um, beads. They are wooden beads. So this is the natural color of wood and these are painted in black. To make the necklace I will also need some thread and I have chosen this black nylon thread. 
is a closure. I have chosen this ornamental closure and in order to assemble <coughs> these parts I will need some findings. For the end of the necklace I will use these bead ends, bead tips I will need some crimps and some jump rings. And beside the jump rings, uh, uh, the findings, um, in order to make a necklace, we need uh, tools. They will talk a bit about the tools that we shall use. So, as you can see here, we have different types of pliers. Uh, the type of plier, pliers that we use the most often with jewelry is this type of plier, which is pointed here and has no teeth here. Uh, and it is called the um, chain nose pliers. So these pliers are called the chain nose pliers. They are flat here without teeth so that they do not scratch the findings. Um, here I have another type of pliers that I might use in case I want to open and close for example the jump rings. Also for the jump rings I need this jump ring opener. Uh, for the crimps, I might use either the crimping pliers or the chain nose pliers. To measure the length of the necklace, I will use the measuring tape. As you can see, it is in centimeters and in inches. And for the thread, I will need the uh, scissors and the lighter. And in order to put the beads on the thread, I will use the Big Eye beading needle. So let's remove the needle from the package. And now, let's talk about the length of the of the necklace. For a normal necklace around the neck for a woman, I usually um, choose a necklace of about 36 centimeters, that would be about 14 inches. If you want to make a necklace around the neck, but for men, you can add one and a half or two inches, that would be between 40 and 42 uh, centimeters long for men. So for women, it's 36 centimeters, that is 14 inches, and for men, you can make it 40 to 42 centimeters, that would be 16 or 17 inches. Of course, whenever you create a necklace for somebody you know, you should measure exactly the length that the person prefers for the necklace. And now let's begin with the with making, creating the necklace. Uh, we shall take the <coughs> thread and as the first step I will make a few knots. So I will make these knots at the end of my thread so that the thread, the beads do not fall off the thread. Uh, 
like this. This way. Now, as, as you can see, I have, let's see from a closer distance, I have this, let's move the beads and the findings away so that we can see what we are doing, like this. We have the end of the thread here, so I can cut a little bit of this end of the thread here. and. With the lighter, I will burn the end of the thread, and by burning the nylon thread, it will melt and stick to the knot so that it will the knot will be more resistant. And now, let's put <coughs> the thread on the needle. When you put a thread on the needle, you should remember that the thread the needle may be a little sharp on the inside here and it might cut a bit of the thread. So whenever you choose uh, some thread you should make sure that you add three or, or three and a half inches uh, as length to the length of the necklace that you want. So if you have a necklace of 14 inches, so the entire necklace should be not, not longer than 14 inches, then you can add three inches or three and a half inches to the thread so that you can make the knots at the end of the thread uh, and also cut a bit of the thread because as I told you the place where the um, thread goes through the needle the, need the thread may be uh, cut a little bit because the needle is sharp inside here so you should be able to cut off the damaged part of the thread, the part that is damaged by the needle. And now I will take one of those crimps so I have taken two crimps and uh, I will put one of the crimps on my needle this way And I'll bring And the crimp should stop at the point where the where the knot is. And here I'm going to press on the crimp. This way. And as you can see, our uh, crimp is now flat, so it would not slip over the knot, and it also blocked <coughs> the thread, and it will not move up and down on the thread anymore. Now, I will take one of those bead end caps and put it on our needle this way and you will see that because of the crimp and the knot the thread will stop like this and it will not come out through the orifice of the bead cap and now let's close the bead end this bead end with the pliers 
so that the knot and the crimp are no longer visible. So this bead at the end of my necklace is masking the knot at the end of the thread. And now let's take one of those jump rings So I will take this jump ring, grab it with the pliers, with the chinos pliers and with the with the jump ring opener and the chinos pliers I have opened the jump ring and I will put it through my bead end. Now I will also put the closure, the clasp inside the jump ring and now we can close the jump ring. So I can use either the jump ring opener or the other pair of pliers to close the jump ring. And now as you can see the end of our necklace is finished. And now we can start putting the beads on our thread and creating the necklace. So I will begin with the white beads and I will alternate black and white beads. So I put three white beads So three white beads, a black bead, three white beads, a black bead. And I will continue until I reach the middle. I get closer closer to the middle of the necklace.
And now I will start adding the uh, metal pendants. I will put the small feather pendant. Now I will put a black, a white and a black, so two white beads and a black bead. I will put the next feather pendant, the larger feather pendant, again a white bead, a black bead and another white bead. I'll put one more white bead and now I have reached the middle of the pendant and I will put the half moon ornament, the half moon pendant. I will put two white beads, one black bead and another white bead this way. So what we have to take into consideration is that our beads and pendants must be placed symmetrically. I'll put the second pendant Again, a white, a black and a white bead. And the last pendant, the small metal pendant. Like this. So we have finished the ornamental part with the pendants and with the um, metal charms and we can continue adding beads by following the rule of the beads from this point to this point. So I will add three white beads, then a black bead and so on.
like this. And now we have finished adding the beads. And all we have to do now is close the necklace. In order to close the necklace, I will take the bead end and I will open it because we shall have to work inside of this bead end to create the knot at the end of our bead. So I put the bead on my needle and on the thread and I will take the second crimp, put it on the needle, bring it inside the thread. Now I will remove the needle and as you can see, let's see from a closer distance now, like this. As you can see, now we have the bead end on our thread and the crimp. Uh, the crimp must be um, made flat by using the pliers so that it will block the beads from coming out on this thread like this. Uh, when you decide where the crimp should be placed, you must take into consideration that the beads should not be too tight together, too compressed like this, because as you can see, if they are too compressed, they are the necklace is too rigid and it doesn't look good. The beads will not look nice. They will look somewhat like this. So some of them go uh, up, some of them go down, if they are too compressed. If they are too loose, as you can see, the thread is visible. So when you decide where to put the crimp, you should take into consideration that the beads should not be too tight to one another, nor too loose. So you can leave about one millimeter of space on the thread and then press on the crimp. This way your beads have a little bit of space to move. Now I have pressed on my crimp and the crimp is pressing on the thread so that the beads will not come out. In order to make sure that this crimp does not move you can also add a few knots above the crimp here at this point. So let's make a few knots here. So as you can see, the longer the thread is here, the easier it will be to create these knots. So it is always important to leave a few inches on the thread so that you can make these final knots on our on the thread of our necklace. So I made one knot, let's make another knot. So as you can see I opened the bead cap so that I can make these knots here. That I have space, enough space to make the knots here. And now that I made some knots here, I will take the scissors, cut the thread and I will burn the end of the thread this way and now I can close the bead end.
So now I've closed the bead and with the pliers. I will take the last jump ring. I will open it. I will put the jump ring through the bead end like this. And I will put the and now I will put the clasp and close the jump ring. This way. And now let's see what our finished necklace looks like So this is the finished necklace. So as you can see I put uh, four beads between the pendant and the feather charm because the pendant is a bit wider here and there should be a symmetry between the ornaments. So this is the finished necklace. I hope you like the necklace. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to make a toggle clasp necklace uh, using a metal charm, some beads. I will use coral and turquoise beads, a metal clasp of course, toggle clasp, and I will also need some nylon cord, I have chosen this black nylon cord for the necklace, for the cord ends I uh, will use these spring ends, and some jump rings and the last finding that I will use is this eye pin. As tools I will use different pliers. I have a chain nose plier, a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of cutting pliers and a pair of round nose pliers. The chain nose pliers are used for bending the wire and for opening and closing the jump rings. The cutting pliers are used for cutting the wire, whereas the round nose pliers, as you can see they are rounded here at the end, are used for creating loops, such as the loop on the eye pin. <coughs> and now uh, and uh, I forgot to tell you, I will also use this 
a jump ring opener for my jump rings. Uh, now that we have talked about the tools, the findings, the beads uh, that we need for this um, toggle necklace, toggle clasp necklace, let's begin making the necklace. Um, let's now create the necklace. I will take the nylon cord and I will take one of these cord ends and I will put the cord end like this on my nylon cord to prevent the nylon cord from uh, coming out of my um, uh, cord end I will grab the um, end of this spring cord end and press on this spring end here like this and as you can see the end of this spring cord end is pressing on my nylon cord I will grab the end of this cord here of the, of the spring cord end and I will lift the last ring of my spring cord end like this so that I can attach the jump ring now let's take one of those jump rings and I will open the jump ring grabbing it with the pliers and with the jump ring opener like this and as you can see I have opened the jump ring now I will put the cord end on this jump ring and I will also take half of the toggle clasp and also put it on my jump ring let's open the jump ring a bit more like this and now let's close the jump ring using the same tools I will take another pair of pliers and grab the jump ring like this so for opening and closing the jump rings you can use either two pairs of pliers like this or a pair of pliers and a jump ring opener like this so um, as you can see one end of my necklace is ready so this part of the toggle clasp has been attached to the cord and now we have this other end of the uh, clasp again I will take the spring cord end and put it on the black nylon cord as you can see and um, I will press on the end of this spring cord end this way so that the nylon cord doesn't come out anymore since the end of this spring cord end is pressing on the nylon cord again I will lift the last ring this way 
with the pliers and let's attach the other end of the toggle clasp. I will open the jump ring like this. I will put the jump ring on the cord end here and the toggle clasp too. I will grab the jump ring and close it. Like this. And I also attached the other end of the toggle clasp. And now let's see if I can close the necklace like this. So this toggle clasp will be worn uh, in front, on the neck in front, in the front part, on the front part of the neck. And now let's add the ornaments. So our necklace with the toggle clasp is ready. Now the next step is to create the ornamentation of the uh, of the uh, necklace. So as you can see I took a, an eye pin and I put my beads, two turquoise beads and a coral bead on my eye pin. And now let's see how long the pin should be. So I will cut a little bit of this pin like this with the cutting pliers like this. this way and now I will bend this pin and I will make sure that the two loops will be in the same plane so I will leave a bit about a millimeter space between the last bead and the place where I will bend my pin so that the last bead does not break and now I will bend to 90 degrees my pin as you can see I bent the pin to 90 degrees and now I will take the round nose pliers and start creating the loop so I will grab the end of my pin and start rolling the pin uh, I will close the loop that I have created like this and as you can see I have a loop on both ends of my beads and the next step will be to attach the ornament so I will attach the feather um, a charm metal charm I will open the jump ring I will put the metal charm on my jump ring. I will also put the beads on my jump ring and I will close. And as you can see I have created the uh, decoration of my necklace. And now I will take the toggle clasp and um, I will attach the decoration to my toggle clasp. So I will take the jump ring, 
I will open it. And I will put the jump ring on the toggle clasp. This way. And I will also attach the a feather pendant with the beads and I will close my jump ring this way and now let's see what the finished necklace looks like let's put the tools away so this is the front part of my necklace. Let's see from a distance what my necklace looks like. So this will be a necklace around the neck. So it's not a long necklace. It's just around the neck, a short necklace. And this is what my necklace looks like and this is the decoration dependent of the necklace. So I hope you liked this video. And I hope that you uh, like the uh, toggle clasp necklace.